<clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Give me just a minute. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for here. All right, I have found it. Good afternoon, Mose. Nice to see you. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat. Drink water. I remember crackers this time. So we'll see how that helps out on this mess. And I'm on time at 5.30. So that really, really helped out a lot. I think it all went out like it should. At least I hope it did. So I'm not sure. Anyway, now I done messed it all up again. Man, oh man. Do not touch. <laughs> it's working. Do not mess with it. You would have think I would have learned that. But now... Let's see here. There we go. Now I'm back in business, I think. All right. Tennessee always use salt as a palate cleanser. It'd probably work for that, but it would probably not be good for my blood pressure, a lot of salt. Saltines would be all right. <clears throat> Doctor always says I'm borderline high blood pressure. She puts me on little low dose lisinopril anyway, but I try to watch it a little bit. Good afternoon, press man. Glad to see you can make it. How many do we got so far? Three now. That's good. We'll give it a few more minutes to populate. Give them a chance. Anyway, I was supposed to do a uh, Boy, this is a mess over here. Y'all can see the whole mess off to the side there. And that's my all my information for my next work. And then I got my bulletin to cover up the screen when we get ready to start doing this. But uh, I don't want to switch to green and yellows. Anyway, I missed it yesterday because I ended up going to the I end up, I've been dizzy all weekend, and like I've never been dizzy before, and it's really weird. It's it's a really, really strange feeling. I mean, it was, my whole world was spinning. I'd lay down, especially on my left-hand side. So yellow should have been yellow. Anyway, my wife got worried that I was having some sort of heart issue. I'm no young man anymore, so and I was kind of worried myself a little bit. I have to be honest, especially after not going away for three days. So we went to the emergency, made a doctor's appointment yesterday morning. They couldn't get me until 10:30 today, but we went to the store and it didn't go away for once. So we went to the emergency room and they run all the tests and they come back and I have vertigo, which I never I heard of the movie and other things, but I really didn't realize what it was. Because I don't have an inner ear infection. I've not had sore ears or anything like that. Doctor ran all the blood work and everything. I guess there's little crystals that form inside your ear canal when they get out of place. When they move around, it gives you a sensation that you're not. Your equilibrium's off. 
but he really didn't say much about it. He just kind of said that, gave me some pills called Antivert or Mizocycline or something like that. Sent me home with it. <laughs> they really didn't do nothing. I go to the doctor today, and my doctor leans me back, makes me turn my head, and then, of course, the world just almost goes black. I mean, just like my whole world just pitched over. And uh, she goes, yep, you got a the problem with what they call stones in your left ear. So she gave me a set of exercises here to do. So I got to do these. She said it'll go away at time. She says that antivert should help along with the exercises as long as you do them together. If it doesn't, of course, contact her. But she didn't seem too worried about it. So anyway, so I debated doing this because of this. But I'm going to anyway, because it says not to drink the alcohol with the other stuff. But I haven't had the one pill today. And so we're going to do what we do. Good evening, John. I've had both those. We're going to prefer the Elijah Craig. Both are excellent, in my opinion. Yeah, they're both good. I've not done a review on this one. I've had it open probably two, three months, maybe more, actually. This is my whatever bottle. I try to only buy the old Elijah Craig 12 barrel stated proofs with the statement on it. They're getting harder and harder to find now. Uh, so I bought the little bottle here just to do a comparison of the new 94 small batch, which is non H stated. The reason I chose them is they're both really close. Uh, it's not age stated anymore. Neither is this one. This one originally had a 12 age statement. This one originally had an eight year age statement on it. 1792. They're both rye. They call this high rye, but they don't list the mash bill on this one. This is a 78, 10, 12, uh, 10 rye, 12 malt barley on this. And if you look on the one, I think it's the, oh shoot, the one review board, they say that it's somewhere between 10, 15% rye on this one. But it's just a guesstimation. They don't know the exact numbers because Barton doesn't release it. I thought about doing very old Barton 86 versus it, but because they're both the same distillery at that point. But 86 to 93 proof might be a little bit telling in this case. Uh, sometimes proof, he doesn't come across as proof. So you got to be careful because sometimes it's not really as it seems. So you kind of got to. Play it by ear. Literally here. Uh -huh. yeah. So anyway, that's why I wasn't on the I didn't get out of the I was supposed to do that with John or Ron last night. And I didn't get out of the minor emergency until like seven seven thirty, eight o'clock. I checked in at two forty five and I seen there's gonna be a problem, so I had to cancel that. Gibson's with Ron. Let me see sure I got both about level. As best as I can tell here. Not that it's going to matter a whole lot. Yeah. Looked pretty good to me. I can't tell the difference between them. Ooh, I can smell the Elijah Craig. Coming on. Coming on, coming on. So anyway, I'm kind of wondering when I put the blindfold on and start spinning this, what it's going to do with the vertigo issue. <laughs> You guys might get a better show than you know. <laughs> and I, I might get an experience I really don't want. So anyway, uh, well, let's check the before I start spinning. We all still got everybody, press man. Have a store pick Elijah of Elijah Craig Small Batch, but haven't cracked it yet. We had the barrel proof, which I'm definitely a fan of. Yeah, I've got four or five different barrel proofs, but I've never had an actual store pick Elijah Craig. That one I've never, we've never seen that here in Kansas anyway. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, that's good, John. I'm glad you guys did. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, but it's just once you're, once you're locked into that cycle with hospitals, you just never get out of it until they decide to release you. And uh, Pressman's having Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof. That's a good choice. That's a dang good one. I've got I've got two different ones, but I haven't opened the other one. I think maybe I have. I've opened one because I did it during the blizzard. But I don't know about the other one. 
don't know. So anyway, all right, guys. Let's get to whirly gigging it. My wife's asleep in the front room, so I got to wake up at 6.30, so we'll see. Try to be over by then, because she has a concert tonight at school. So anyway, okay, let's go easy. So far, I'm good with the vertigo. As long as I stay pretty much upright and I don't do a lot of quick movements to the side to side, I'm pretty good. It's when I do the movement side to side or I start to lean my head, tilt my head back, which let's not get crazy. But things kind of go a little wonky. So anyway, it's just a difference. But I like these glasses because they help. I wish they were a little more tulip shaped like a, uh, what are they called? Uh, copitas. Because I got some copitas that I had my name monogrammed on, a couple of them. And then I did the Glen Cairns, which I've given all away but one. So need to need to get some more with my name on them, with the scout name on them, so I can start, start giving you guys something to look at. Maybe purchase if you want. But I'm not there yet. It'll probably be into summer before I do that. So, anyway, it should be well mixed up by now. And I'm going to try to avoid making a fool out of myself and guessing them, but if I feel so inclined, I will try to guess again. But, <clears throat> we'll just have to Try to try to avoid that because I haven't got one right, I don't think, yet. Maybe one. I think the rise I got right. And that's been it. My bourbons has always been a not a good situation. Are those capita those are more those are wine glasses. They're a little too open at the top instead of the capitas. I thought about getting a gla local glass blower here in town to see if he could get me some uh, blow me some capita shaped because I'd rather do it with capitas than Glen Cairns. I think capitas would probably be easier for him. I'd take both into him, see what he could do, but he might be able to do the capitas easier than the Glen Cairns. You know, more like a stemless wine glass even. But if he could do that with. Uh, blue or this kind of brown color here either one works great because they both mask the color you really can't these are close together color naturally anyway and then they're they're virtually indistinguishable so just you can't really tell so anyway i've thought about that but i don't know how much they charge and and uh i've got to find the he's up on he's up North side of Wichita, the company is that does that. And I don't even know if they can even do it. For such a small thing, and for two, they might charge me an enormous price, you know. But anyway, it's a thought. Anyway, let's see what we got here. Oh, I need to, before I get started here, I need to cover up the screen, this part of the screen, so I can see the comments, but I can't see me, so I don't know what I'm actually trying. Hmm. Surprisingly, they're kind of similar. I would have never guessed they'd be so similar. Wow. <clears throat> I 
Very similar, extremely similar. The major difference in the nose is this one is a little bit more bright. I know the bright's a color, it's not really, it's a little bit more It's lighter and more intense than this one. And I think that's the rye. I think that's the rye difference between the two. Mm, smells good though. They both have very good. This one is slightly less intense than that one. This is definitely more intense. More caramel on this one than that one. The corn note delivered more evenly in this one. A lot better, a lot better, uh, a lot more restrained, but very prominent. The corn stands out more than the than the than the, than the rye note does in this one. But the caramel's much richer in this one than that one on the nose. Vanilla's very background, but it's there. That one, the, the caramel's, the, the almost minty rye character in this one. It's a minty note. Almost, almost borderline light eucalyptus note in this one. Menthol. There's a slight menthol note that just really is, it really, you really pick up on it. My nose really picks up on it really well. There's a background caramel. Vanilla. Got a lot of the a lot of the rye spice notes coming through. Hmm. Oh, the caramel is just the caramel is so much more pronounced in this one, along with the corn sweetness. With the vanilla really comes up next. Oh my goodness. Mm. A very slight yeasty note. And it's more a balanced, it balances this out really well. And the oak is, the oak dwells on the nose, but it doesn't, the oak is there, it's, it's, it's very restrained. And the oak on the nose, this one is bringing more citrus in nature. I may be wrong, because I'm not going to be real careful about what I say because I <laughs> this one smells and comes across as if it has more time in the barrel and a lot better barrel interaction than this one does. This one still comes across a little youthful in what we're getting here. And if you say that and you think about what you know about the two, you would think youthful and more of a high ride note probably would be this one. 
my door, I've been burnt so many times. I'm scared to say it, but according to what I'm my nose right now, um, I would say the, this was actually the small batch, the, the 1792, personally, just on the nose. Let's go with the palette. Oh, that is good. A little heat tingle. Mm. The caramel. Oh, that is. Oh, I love the caramel, man. Mm. The caramel and vanilla are just running hand in hand with that one. The oak, very well restrained, very well. It's very well tempered. Oh. Almost a little date or fig. Something I don't often get in bourbons. This right there as it goes into the finish on the very back here in the back of your tongue. Just that real dark dried pitted type fruit like a date or a fig. And it's the dried version. It's not, it's not fresh. It's, it's like the sun-kissed dried ones you get up. Mm. Oh. That's good. Ah. I have a 1792 uh, foolproof store pick as well. Uh, I forget. forget where mine's from. It's from that. It's from a liquor store in downtown Wichita. I haven't opened it either yet. <clears throat> yes, the German chocolate cake went very well with that. With that. Jack Daniels. Oh, very well. But now I like I like coconut and chocolate. And very, very good flavors to combine. Especially with the high proof whiskey. They just work really, really well. And I saw 79 full proof, but couldn't believe the price of $40. Might have made a mistake now and not pulling the trigger at the time. Yeah, I think that's all. I paid forty two ninety nine, I think, for my store pick foolproof. It's generally between between forty and around. Well, well, honestly, it's closer to forty five dollars in my area. The the foolproof I remember it's around forty five. I think some of the more high end stores will have it up around fifty, but you can find it for forty five usually. I think. Um, I forget the other one that's more expensive than that one they produce that I always seems to be a few dollars more. But you can usually get the bottle and bond, I think, around 40 bucks, somewhere in there. Then they had a high rye, they had a weeded, I think. Maybe they didn't have a weeded. I don't know. They've had something like they've had a port finish, if I remember right, too. But I haven't seen that one for quite some time. I can still, I still know where there's a bottle of eight year. Uh, the, I think it's the Ridgemont Reserve, or I think it was the Ridgemont Reserve, uh, 1792 Ridgemont Reserve, eight year. And it has the wound stuff around here, the neck of it. But you have to buy some 175 liter and it's 60 bucks. I just, I can't. I would like to get it to try because it's age stated and see what the difference is, but it's a lot of money and that's a lot of whiskey for sit on my shelf for a long time. I'd have to sell it out. Send it out. Now this one has tamed down since it's breathed some. It's tamed down quite a bit since it's been breathing. And I still get the they still get the menthol and the mintiness to it from the rye. The corn is more noticeable now than it was. 
the caramel is a little more integrated. The vanilla is still there, but it's really in the background, and it's more of a, I mean, it's literally like if you have the, the, the vanilla straight out of the bottle, just stuck your tongue to it, a real raw vanilla. But it's very background. you got to hunt for it. There's still that kind of citrusy feel to this one. But it's not so intense now. Let's go for the palate. A little bit hotter in the delivery than that one. Finishes really quick. Not not nearly as long and in long and what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, creamy. That's a good word. Long and creamy. This one's more long and creamy. This one's I keep I think it's I think this is right. I think this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one. But it's very, it, there's nothing wrong. I mean, they're very different in the character, and I think the rye is the difference. And if it's true, this is a higher rye mash bill, then I think that goes to that one because I'm really, the rye comes across much better in this one. You still get a little bit of that menthol on the palate. You still get, The vanilla is very subdued. You get more of the menthol, more of a citrus note, and a minty note with this one. And I hate to say this, I want to take another drink because it's going to sound wonky. There is almost, not almost, in the very back as it's finishing, it's not a long finish, but in the very back as it's finishing, it turns a little sour. But along with that sourness comes a slight banana note. It's not banana note like you think of when you think of Jack Daniels and that banana it gives you there. It's not like that. It's very subtle. You got to, and it's it really it's kind of this one's good beginning. This one's good beginning to end with a good finish. This one's good beginning to beginning to finish, and kind of sours out just a little bit at the end of that finish with the citrus battling with. It's just a that menthol mintiness kind of doesn't work so well with the other notes you get at the very end. Oak level, and I think the oak level is what's bringing that sour and bitter note in it in this case. The oak integration on this one is not as good as this one. I'm still going to stick with it. I may be real wrong again because I just don't trust myself anymore on this. Been wrong so much, but I think these are how they go. I won't know till I finish one off, so let's finish the better one of the two. This is my winner right here. It's better beginning to end. Oh, wrong again. Wow. That's why I didn't want to call it.
This is actually for being a quote unquote higher rank match belt does not come through in there. I think the choice again, the barrel, the barrel impact with this one is much more integrated than it is with this one. Elijah Craig, I love. I love the 12 year old small batch. I mean, that's one of my favorite whiskeys ever. But even this one here, and I know there's guys done blind taste, and I've done my own blind taste of them, and there is a difference. I can notice the difference even on my own. That is wild. That is so wild. Zero for four on these birds. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy, guys. That is crazy. So, 1792, I apparently like better than I thought I did. I really do. This is, of these two, as they sit right now, this would be my choice. The rye is much more predominant in this one. This one has... The caramels are lower and slower and more. This one, better balanced. That's the key word in all this. There's a little better balance in this one than there is in this one. The finish, the very end of the finish in this one, kind of, is not very integrated. It's very different. But from beginning to palate to the beginning to the middle part of the finish, it's good. It's just that little bit of aftertaste that hangs around that very end of that finish that just kind of turns a little sour and slightly. I use my my uh, my my generic term wonky. <laughs> It's just a little wonky in that tail end of that finish as compared to that one. Finish is a little longer than this one. Who knows? This is a 375. I didn't bother buying a 750 of this because I got so many of the others. I don't want to have an investment of a 750 until I get those others drained down. In fact, I just bought another bottle a month and a half ago, and it was the... It was the old style bottle. It was the bridge between, it was non H stated bridge between this bottle and the 12 on the back. So it was the last of the old bottles when they took the 12 off the back and they didn't have it non H stated to this. And then I've heard, or somebody did a review comparison, if I remember right, of that particular bottle to this particular bottle. And I don't remember their findings. I think they like this one actually better. I don't remember, though. I don't want to comment to it because I don't remember exactly. All right, let's go to the comments. What have I missed out on? All my babbling. All right. German, yeah, that was good. That was good. I also like the Jack Daniels in the snow. I like that review also that he has Jack Daniels in the snowbank. And I went way too far there. That thing doesn't go very fast. I grabbed 1792 full proof store pick. Yeah, and I, I won't comment into that. I got one too. I need to open it just to try it. But couldn't believe the price of $40. I paid $42 at the local non pickup. $60. 60 bucks. Wow. You know, I've noticed that with some of the uh, the Knob Creek store picks in town. Some of the Knob Creek store picks are actually, they offer them cheaper than they do the standard Knob Creek single barrel. The standard Knob Creek single barrel will be around 45 46 bucks. The 
the store pick somewhere between 42 and 45 bucks. And sometimes they're like two to three dollars cheaper. And I know they're trying to get you to buy the product, but it is odd that they would have that kind of difference. Hey, Mark, nice seeing you. I have those batches also. Just grab the A119C917. I seen the A119. I didn't buy it. Subtle banana sounds nice. It does sound nice, but it's very subtle. It's very, it's very at the end. You won't notice it till you're at the very end of that one. Or I don't know it's John. And uh, EC for the win, but EC wasn't the win. <laughs> oh my! I was wrong. Bought another bottle of the Four Roses small batch recently. It's hard to beat for the price. Four rows of small batch is good. It's good, but it's it's that one bottle will do me. Because by the time it's went up in price, when you used to get four rows of small batch in this area for around 25 bucks, give or take a couple of bucks. Now they've got it, most places it's $30 or more. By the time you're paying $30 or more, go ahead and spend the extra 10 bucks and get the get the single barrel. I mean, it's a lot better. Every single barrel I've had, I can't say as I've had one single barrel that's not better than the small batch myself. Now, that's my problem. I've only had two single barrels. Well, no, I don't have one, two. Two store pick single barrels. Mark provided me with one. Thank you, Mark, again. And that's a very good one. And then I've had a couple of non-store pick single barrels, an LE and a... Uh, there was an LE. And I forget the other one. I think it was an in warehouse in pick. Both of those are good. Both of those were much better than I think the small batch is. But the small batch where it shines to me, the small batch is a great barbecue. It's one of those that when you're doing a barbecue and you're out there tending to the grill and you, you want something to pour, just drink out of just a straight old rocks glass. With, I don't use no rocks, but pour an instrument. And when you're out there just tending the grill, it just, there's something about moment in time and this is a moment in time thing where that small batch that's where it shines to me in my palate i really connects whether i'm doing steaks whether i'm doing hamburgers on the grill it just connects that that smell of the meat cooking and whole nine yards <clears throat> just it's i don't know that's all i can really say about it we each got our own different experiences as we go through life and that's my personal one on that that's where I like the small batch, but I haven't bought, I finished that lot bottle off not long after the the cotton bale, when I did the cotton bale thing, and I haven't replaced it, I don't, I'm not sure if I will. All right, where did I leave off at? Zero for four, yeah, that's me, John, zero for four. Oh, well, got to start somewhere. Every time you think, see, and that's why I did these two. I haven't had this one in probably three or four months, and the same with this one. I have not had either one of these. I opened this, drank it down to about, well, the dram before you've seen this one, the pour before this one. I drank it down to there in about a week and a half, and it's set. Both of these are set. So my memory is not clear. I don't want to – got to be if, – if I sit down – I'm talking with it. If I'm going to sit down and do a blind like this, it's either got to be two that are very similar in all aspects, and I've not tried either one in a long time because it kind of jades it. Let's say if I drank a pour out of this a week ago, that would be fresh enough on my memory. I probably would be able to pick it out. But pretty much been a while since I've had either one of these, and therefore it kind of jades it because I have actually had – couple of pours off of an open 12 I've got still <laughs> in the last month in fact uh, but it doesn't taste quite the same as that it just doesn't and I think it's the finish is the difference into the finish anyway I digress I went too far with that maybe with all the fiasco of the old Barton distillery only the best casks are left that could be another thing I don't know what year. I'm not sure I've seen a date on this one, actually. I don't know if they do a date on these or not. So I can't really tell you. 
I don't see no laser etching on it. Not in the light I got in here. So I'm not sure. But this was only, this was bought in the last six, seven months. The same with that, really, actually. But like I said, it's been three months since I've probably had anything off either one of them. I've been meaning to do a review on this, but it always kind of keeps getting thrown to the back. So I need to sit down and do a formal review, especially after today's, after today's, I think. I need to open that that uh, foolproof too and try it. Anyway, yeah, I would say this is probably newer stuff, newer pick. They go through it pretty quick in our stores up here. And it's not very expensive. We're talking... Usually twenty seven to twenty nine ninety nine, twenty seven ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine. So they're both comparable in price on seven fifties. They're both right in the same same area. So yeah, could be. Maybe it is some of the better barrels left over that they're doing. But you know, I don't know exactly when that was barreled or not. I don't know how long store may or may not have had it needed before I bought it. So that's a tough one. All right. New fours is one of fours getting good reviews. Yeah, I imagine that would be an eye. Yeah, I haven't seen it here either. I haven't seen that impress, man. Try single barrel 132. And I don't know which one I have. I've got two different ones, both of them. Like I said, I've only opened one. Whichever one it was I opened and tried, you guys know better than I do, probably. Tipping on the 135.2. Hey, Donner Pass Whiskey, nice seeing you. I check out the single bow, Robert. Thanks for the advice. Yep, it, it is worth it. It's They're definitely much better. To my, to my way of thinking, maybe that dishwasher is not complete. Okay, I turned it off. Sorry, guys, but I had to turn off the dishwasher before the thing began. Remove the cap so I can see my see myself. Hey Robert, nice seeing you. My bourbon journey, Scott. So, hey, unsalted crackers. No, they're not unsalted crackers. I I can't bring myself to do that. I've done it, but it's not the same. I like tomato soup with crackers and a grilled cheese. That's a perfect lunch. And if you take the salt out of the crackers, it just, I don't know. I've ate it since I was a kid that way, and it's just something on profile. I, really do. I got to leave the cracker alone. It's becoming a, it's becoming a prop. <laughs> they get palate cleanser, yeah. But I like what's left on my palate, actually, right now. Martin comes off a little lighter. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. It, what surprised me was the length of finish on this one. Yeah, the Barton length of finish on, on the 1792, that's, I didn't really, I didn't remember that from my previous tasting. <coughs> it's a very more, it's more balanced. It's, it's, it's a much more balanced whiskey, I think, personally. You know, well, it would be good. I get the foolproof open, try that out, and get one of my Elijah Craig barrel proofs open, and then take that and uh, put pit them against each other here. I don't know when. I'm probably not going to be doing this next week, guys. I got a well coming up, and they're supposed to split on Friday, which means Tuesday will be a no go for me. But uh, that would be interesting, too, because the foolproof and the single barrel, they're going to be proof wise pretty close. I remember right. So that would be a good one to do. What do you want to do, baby? Make coffee. I don't care. I don't think it's going to bother them. You guys don't care if she makes coffee. <laughs> anyway, well, I don't know what else, guys. I've enjoyed it. It's been a good show, and I've enjoyed doing this comparison because it really surprised me. It really... These, these are fun. It teaches you. It humbles you really badly. I'm getting used to it now. It's 
One thing though, this one changes quickly. As it oxygenate, as it airs out, there was more of a change in this one than this one. The flavors subtly, subtly commingled a little bit better. This one really didn't change. It stayed from beginning to end. And I would have swore this spent more time in the barrel than this one did. As they're neither one age dated, I can't say for sure. And like I said at the beginning of this, previously had an eight year age statement, previously had a 12. Now they say most stuff's nine to 10 year old here. They don't even say anything about this anymore. The rye, very much more intense than this one, than this one. Although, I don't know, they have one called a high rye too, I think in 1792, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But the rye is just a little bit more prominent in the Elijah Craig than the 1792. According to my palate, I'm there, the, without having a mash bill, I don't exactly know how much rye is in there. So I don't know how much effect versus, I mean, it's, it's, it's really strange and it's really a lot of, a lot of introspection when you start thinking of it. Each cask is different. They try to blend the casks to get a consistency, what they look for in their profile. But even after they get the consistency they look for in their profile, there's still subtle changes that might <coughs> impact it beyond it. Like one time they may have the initial palate and initial taste all alike, but one generation of this might have a better finish than the other generation. Might have a better entry, but in the main part, in the main part of the palate, it's going to continue. And they do most of their their stuff off nosing. That's what I've been told and led to believe. Most everything they do on their blendings off nosing and little sips, and then they spit the sip out. So, and these guys are much more talented, much better at it than I will probably ever be. You know, I, I'm not. It's not. I don't even contemplate that. I'm just telling you which one I like best. And today, I like this better than that, for sure. It could be the day. It's a nice, rainy day. It's kind of cool. A hot day, it might be a different result. Who knows? All right, guys. It's 620. I probably ought to start winding down here. Most time just listening, getting ready for my stream tonight. <laughs> just, yeah. Yep. They make good juice for sure. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that thing gets in the way of coffee. This is true. Sumatra or Komodo coffee. Ah, my wife's a Folgers girl. <laughs> she don't drink nothing but Folgers. <laughs> Period. There are canes occasionally. Other than that, it's Folgers. <laughs> What's up, bro? Not much, Alex. Nice seeing you here. It's been said that the 1792 small batch doesn't take to water well. I didn't try water in it. I could see probably breaking down with water. I could see that. It's, I'm not going to do it now, not in this late in the game. They're both right around that 94, 94 proof, 93 point, 93.7. So they're 0.3 percentage points of proof between them, which is not, this is very little. Something I don't think I would notice. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to notice it. When I had to this at uh, the distillery, it tasted amazing, but they pulled a special barrel. Yeah. Robert, are you slash house on well water? No, we're not. We're on city water here. We was on well water where I previously lived. We since switched to city water. Ever give local well water a try for Yes, on my previous one I did. Here we run it through a pure filter. And so what I do, how I drink my water here is I refill. I got a couple of, I got a gallon whiskey, a gallon of, gallon of water jug. And then I've also got a couple of glass whiskey bottles with corked whiskey bottles because that, that uh, glass gets it cold, keeps it cold. And I drink my water. I fill them both through the pure, then I put them in the fridge and let them set. Wow. Hey, Robert, you still want to review that beer? I forgot about that, Alex. 
I'm going to, I will, I'll make a beer review. And I, I don't, you know, I don't, I can't, I can't say as I'm going to be as good as you guys that do beer all the time. I mean, I love drinking stouts with you guys and I love sharing that Sunday with you and everything. Mine might not be as thorough or as complete as what you guys do because on beer, I'm just, I just don't have the experience you guys do. I mean, yeah, I've drank a lot of beer in my life, but to sit and analyze it, I don't, I haven't done that long enough to really feel experienced at it, but I can tell you I like it and I do. So yeah, I will sit down and do it. So Everybody will get to see a weird review on my channel, but that'll be good. What kind of beer and brand? Oh, it's a real off-the-wall thing. It's a Belgian beer, a Hof. I ain't got the bottle in here. It's a Hof. Dormal. Hof something. Hof. Hof something Dormal. It's a Belgian uh, beer. It's a, if I remember right, it's a, uh, Grappa casks. It's it's a Belgian beer. They've uh, aged in ex Grappa casks, and uh, oh, it's good stuff. I don't know, like fifteen months. I think they aged it, and uh, it's really good beer. But I can only get two is all I've ever found. I went and bought the other one after I drank the first one. It was so stinking good. Wasn't a normal beer by any means, but it's really good. Talking beer. Have you had J W Lee's Harvestdale? Finished in different cask. I've never even heard of Shade W. Lee's. I, I don't have, I'm, I have to go to the west side of Wichita to Goebbels Liquor to get to uh, get any of those beers. And there are so many beers in there. I mean, it's just one, two aisles of nothing but craft beers. And I can't keep track of them. I mean, they're just, Way too many. I, I, I may have seen it and didn't pay attention to it. I just that's just not something I've really done. Santa Fe Freestyle Pilsner and Tivoli Golden Colorado beer. Again, I don't know as I've ever seen either one of those. I've drank some Colorado beers. Uh, now you put me on the spot. I, I I can't recall which ones, but I've had some. I know I have. Because obviously I've spent time in Colorado and I drink beers when I'm there. Even in Texas, I've had some of the local Texas beers as well when I'm down there. It's definitely that beer that you're going to review. It's definitely a 2015 now. Yeah, yeah, it's a 2015 beer. I'm not good at reviewing at all, really. I just enjoy it. No, John, you do a great job. You do a great job. Don't fool yourself. You, you know, I, I learned by watching. Your reviews, I mean, you do a great job on your beer reviews, John. Kevlar usually doesn't do the beers that I try to just my whiskey reviews are totally but it's and the key is it's fun. It is fun. Coors and Schlitz for the win. I ain't had a Schlitz since 1984, probably. 83. I didn't even know they made Schlitz anymore. But I have had Coors. I do drink. The Coors, the little uh, banquet beers and the little bottles, I do drink those. I, I'm, if I'm out mm, at some place where the wife's going to drive home and I want a beer, I will get a little bottle of Coors Banquet, one, maybe two, out of say no wheat steak or whatever, provided they don't got nothing decent at the bar. Last time we went, I got a, they had a, oh, what was it? It was a uh, Knob Creek uh, Barrel Select. At that place in West Wichita. Ah, oh, that was good. Anyway, well, guys, I need to get down off here. So I know, uh, I know uh, Scott's going to have his his uh, live stream coming up. So tune in to him and enjoy his live stream if you get a chance. I like Scott; he does great, great job. He he is more probably in tune with bourbons and even I am. I mean, he's really good at it. He's probably, you know, he has tried so many different craft bourbons and his knowledge of that is just expanding. I mean, he's, I really enjoy watching these reviews just because of the unusual craft bourbons. You don't really see something I'm not going to see very often if I see it all. And he just gets in there and plows forward and gives them all a spin and he does a good job with it. So gets all of my, uh, all my support, trust me. 
So anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here. Everyone have a good evening. Remember, the spirit in your glass ain't running from you. Take your time, sip, and enjoy it. You'll all be better for it. So will I. So will everyone. Everyone have a good evening.